Genetically modified organisms contain DNA that has been altered using genetic engineering. Genetically modified animals are mostly used for research purposes. But genetically modified plants are common in today's food supply. More common than you know. It's been described as the future of food. However, many Nigerians are hesitant. You know how we are. What we don't know won't kill us and God is in control. But we cannot ostrich our way through this one. My guest explains why GMOs are necessary here and safe for us. Abuja has an entire biotech farm churning out genetically modified food for export and sustenance. We visit one of them in our focus on the FCT, and as we do every week, we give you our Abuja wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megua. Let's begin by giving you a roundup of leading stories from the nation's capital. A total of 286 foreigners from several countries were conferred Nigerian citizenship by President Muhammadu Buhari. The ceremony was held at the banquet hall of State House. This ceremony, therefore, today is a further demonstration of the federal government's commitment and the determination to remove all, to remove as many people as possible from statelessness. In this regard, I would like to reiterate our commitment to the strategic role Nigeria plays in the Committee of Nations in its unwavering quest for greater human integration towards ensuring peace and prosperity. President Buhari has approved national honors and cash awards of 200 million naira for Team Nigeria contingents to the 2022 Commonwealth Games and World Athletics Championships. The president made the disclosure at a presidential reception in honor of the athletes. Twelve times the world stood still as our green, white green, <laughs> national flag was hoisted and the national anthem recited. 35 times we made it to the podium. We, we all team Nigeria made that possible. We brought glory and honor to our country. I hereby approve that national honors and the cash award of 200 million naira for team Nigeria. The president hosted United States Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, Senator John Kerry, who is also on the working visit to Nigeria. He also met with Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. The meetings discussed the issues of renewable energy sources and the global transition and Nigeria's energy transition plan. The president also met with some state governors. He met with Governor Belo Masari of Katsina State separately I met with Governor Umar Ganduje of Kano, Governor Abdullah Sule of Nasarawa State, and Governor Kaede Faemi of Ekiti State, who has emerged the president of the Forum of Regions of Africa in his capacity as the chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum. The idea behind the establishment of the forum, sir, is really for subnationals to become the engines of growth and the agents of innovation. Uh, in a way that they can reduce the pressure on the central governments. Uh, and in many of these countries, policies are set at the central government levels, but implementation really occurs primarily at the state level, just like ours here in Nigeria. The federal government has instructed a national task force on the prohibition of illegal importation, smuggling of arms, ammunition, light weapons, chemical weapons, and pipeline vandalism not force to stop all operations immediately. This is one of the key decisions reached at this week's National Security Council meeting, chaired by President Muhammad Dubuari. Equality of concern is the 
presence of some illegal outfits that impersonate the legitimate and security agencies. Of particular concern is a body called National Tax Force on illegal importation of goods, small arms, and what have you, but the short name for it is not force. We, the, the council declares that body an illegal organization. The president also chaired this week's federal executive council meeting. Aside from the approved memos, the council condemned the disruption of traffic along the lagos Ibadan Expressway by the members of the National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, who are protesting the continued industrial action by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU. The right to protest is a very well protected right in our constitution, but it does not include the right to inflict pain and inconvenience on other people. And so whilst their protests can go on, they should refrain from blocking the road in order to do their protest. That is, in itself is a violation of law if they are well advised. Talking about FEC approvals, the council approved the production of vaccines in commercial quantity to support routine immunization programs in the country. Now they have been sourcing for international partners who will uh, join them and give them the technology transfer that they require. <laughs> and after going through various countries, South Africa, Indonesia, they settled with the Serum Institute of India which will now be the technical partner to support them in a certain vaccine production plant in Nigeria. The Senate Committee on Finance held public hearing on the medium-term expenditure framework 2023 to 2025 and fiscal strategy paper. The chairman of the committee, Senator Adeola Olamileko, wants the federal government to consider rescinding its decision on waivers granted to some companies. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, says the Nigerian army is firming up its preparations to provide the necessary security assistance to ensure the successful conduct of the 2023 general elections. He made the promise at the second and third quarter army conference. I wish to once again assure the public that the Nigerian army remains committed to discharge its constitutional responsibilities and assist in providing a secure environment for the conduct of general elections through Operation Safe Conduct. Welcome back. Stanford University compared organic foods to genetically modified foods and found that there was no strong evidence that one or the other is either more nutritious or more likely to carry with it additional health risks. Are we able to ensure standard requirements are met? We visited a few of these biotech farms in Abuja and what we found is quite revealing. Please watch this. This is a research farm for agricultural biotechnology. Three biotech crops are undergoing field trials in Nigeria. They are cow peas, cotton, and beans. The idea of the farm, which is within the premises of the National Biotechnological Development Agency, is to strengthen the local variety of the crops to be insect resistant and herbicide tolerant. The problem that some has always experienced, the challenge with um, soybeans cultivation is weed invasiveness, weediness. The weeds come up and choke up the plants. And so they share nutrients, you know. So, um, and it results to low yields, of course. So the breeders now taught it wise. Looking at the challenge farmers are going through, they taught it wise to develop certain varieties of soybeans that will be Habicides, you know, um, tolerant because um, the farmers always resort to spraying because if you till the soil, you're always tilling, you know, weeding and what. Weeding is is actually um, labor intensive, you know, and most of our farmers here in Nigeria or in Africa at large are like old people. It's mostly the older generation. They have no much energy, you know, to be using whole cutlass, tilling the soil all the time, and then disturbing the crop. And as you're tilling the soil, you know, you're destroying a lot of things, nutrients and what, and then it also causes a carbon 
you know, sequestration. So, but you know, by not stealing the soil, by applying, you know, that um, a chemical or herbicide, of course, the weeds will die off, you know. Uh, but then your own uh, crop, if your crop is not modified, if the soybeans is not modified, as you spray, the soybeans will also dry off, uh, as the weeds dry off. So in, in order to actually mitigate that major challenge, um, scientists, breeders developed that um, in variety of soybeans that can resist. As you spray, your soybeans is still vig vigorous, it still it stands erect, but the weeds die and they go down. And as they go down, of course, they support your um, soybeans plants, they support the growth, and then they trap the nutrients. So, I mean, it it's becomes advantageous and then the yield now, because they're not sharing nutrients with weeds again, so they can produce more pots. In July of last year, 32 farmers were given the seedlings of the newly commercialized cowpea in the Federal Capital Territory. This is part of the plans to get more farmers to begin to plant Baltic crops and ultimately make farming more attractive. More farmers in other parts of the country are expected to get more seedlings to plant the crops. It's good to actually make agriculture, um, what will I say, make it um, simpler, simplify it, you know, remove drudgery from agriculture and everyone in the society will join because um, Mr. President has already actually um, declared that we should grow what we eat and then eat what we grow. And so by so doing, we are actually encouraging that to grow what we eat so that you know more people will because if you simplify agriculture of course make it business like of course more people will go into it the youth will be attracted they will go into it and so we'll have more food and if we have more food of course we're going to have um, um let's say prices will be stabilized will go down Nigeria is facing looming food crisis caused by climate change and insecurity. However, the introduction of genetically modified crops is considered key in addressing the issue. The U.S. is one of the countries that place value on life. So for them to have commercialized such um, variety of crops, I believe they've done lots of proximate analysis, lots of analysis on the crop before it was uh, commercialized. So uh, I don't see any reason why anybody should have concerns or be scared of um, the technique or the technology. Yes, so far uh, it's meant to, you know, solve a problem or the other, you know, on, on, on crop improvements, on food security eh, and all that. The National Biosafety Management Agency is saddled with the responsibility of providing a regulatory framework, institutional and administrative mechanisms for safety measures in application of modern biotechnology, with the view of preventing any adverse effects on human health, animals, plants and the environment. The Director General of the agency insists that biotech crops are safe for public consumption. Anyone that uses biological agents maliciously will be prosecuted of such a person or a group of people or organization who face the full world of the law. Nigeria as a country must be secured so that know that the federal government sees the issue of this national biosecurity policy as a major, a major national assignment. The agency will meticulously ensure that this process under the Federal Ministry of Environment is conclusive this year so that the Federal Executive Council can take a critical look of at it and take a decision and we are hoping by the end of this year it will become our national policy on biosecurity. Nigeria officially signed the Biosafety Bill into law in 2015, making it eligible to join the League of Nations already using genetic engineering to boost food production. 
Nevertheless, the government is putting together the National Bell Security Policy and Action Plan, which is aimed at protecting Nigerians and the environment from any threat arising from biological organisms. My guest on the program is Professor Abdullahi Mustafa, the Director General and CEO of the National Biotechnology Development Agency. He assures us that genetically modified foods are safe for us, and what's more, we've been consuming them for a while with no incident. <music> Professor Mustafa, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Thank you very much, Kelly. Talk to us a bit about the NABDA Act. Okay, um, uh, NABDA, you know, was formed in 2001, and then as it is formed in 2001, um, there was no act of the National Assembly that was signed by Mr. President to establish the uh, agency. But uh, there was uh, so many attempts in that time to see that there was uh, uh, a, an act establishing an agency that is NABDA since that time, but uh, it failed. So with the establishment of NABDA, what does that mean for genetically modified foods and all the research that is going on in your agency? What, what, what does it facilitate? You see, uh, anything that you are to do, there has to be a law that is backing you. These researches that we were doing, it is now being confirmed by the federal government that we should go ahead with all the researches that we are doing in biotechnology, in the area of agriculture, medicine, industry, environment, and genes and genomics, and many other areas. So which means now the federal government has its own interest tilted towards biotechnology. And this biotechnology is very promising, is something that will develop or catapult the development of the nation. And when you have biotechnology industry, you are taking care of your agricultural sector because we can't maintain the way we are doing the farming. We have to improve. Uh, improve into uh, mechanized agriculture and then improve seed and then the quality of the seed are going to be resistant to all this climatic change which is natural uh, the, 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 the flooding and uh, weird uh, uh, soil quality and so many more so this biotechnology is a research that is precise in attacking problem and solving problems. In the area of industry you can produce uh, enzymes that fast track the uh, production of uh, maybe if uh, for example I can take uh, yogurt for the starter culture and what have you so all these things are what is biotechnology and then when you come to uh, medicine you know we are lacking in so many areas of uh, medicine and uh, this biotechnology is first tracking the development in the area of medical biotechnology for example when you take vaccine Vaccine development, we have gone far. We have uh, moved by, by force now. This uh, uh, signing of the bill has really, really uh, give us the courage to move faster and move forward to see that we have developed the vaccine for the uh, country. And this vaccine, we are trying to use the um, messenger RNA that is uh, going to be the platform that we we'll use to now develop other vaccines that are of interest in the nation. So what particular vaccines is your agency trying, looking at? Are we talking about COVID vaccines? Are we looking at a vaccine for malaria? What are some of the things that you're actually working on? Uh, let me elaborate further. You see, the messenger RNA is a technology that you can use like a platform that you form. And this messenger RNA, you can channel your vaccine to whatever vaccine you are interested in. The first thing is to get the technology, get our people in the country, that's those are, that, that are Nigerians, to have the first-hand technology in all the sections that will combine to give you the platform of the messenger RNA. So we basically, have to work a, a technology that creates a platform where you can actually create vaccines that are relevant to us. Exactly. As a people. Let's, exactly. let's move on to food, because that's, uh, that's a very important bit of this. So with climate change, there's need for climate change resistant strands of all kinds of plants uh, that don't need as much water as others do. Let's talk about the ones that have been adopted in Nigeria. How many genetically modified uh, 
organisms uh, in terms of plants exist in Nigeria at the moment? Well, we have, uh, Nigeria has adopted uh, two crops at the moment, and uh, there is a cash crop, which is, uh, the, 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 that is uh, used in the uh, boosting of uh, our industries, that is cotton. Cotton, as you know, uh, whoever is uh, at least 30 years or and above, I should know that uh, there are uh, there were industries that were producing textiles in the country, but due to the lack of raw material, unfortunately, uh, the companies closed and uh, they can no longer uh, continue. But fortunately now we have brought back the cotton and then the farmers are really, really happy. Uh, more than uh, 5,000, more than 50,000 farmers have gone back to the farm. And then uh, more than uh, two, 250 uh, cutting and ginery industries have come back to start working. And then by that, if you extrapolate, you'll see that quite a lot of people have got a job now as we are talking, and this is the essence of the technology. Second crop that was adopted, that is adopted in the country, is uh, cowpea, which is beans. I think uh, almost every household in this country is using uh, beans in his house for food, uh, as food. So um, that one too, it has been uh, uh, something that was challenging to the uh, farmers. Farmers, a lot of them were crying because uh, they have low yield and low quality. And insect. there is one insect that is uh, Maruka vitrata that is eating the pod of the... The one that we uh, all know as the bean weevil. No, it's not bean weevil. It's oh. uh, eating the pod of the beans. And that uh, is destroying because the, the moment it eats the pod and everything is not going to... Uh, produce uh, is not going to come up. That is the seed of the beans that is uh, uh, of interest. So uh, having seen that, uh, we've made uh, a lot of effort this year to bring uh, one strong company to see that uh, the company can now collect those people to now uh, encourage them to give them strategies and then to company for its for for that company also to enter into the uh, production by itself so that we can have large quantity of the uh, seedlings to give to the farmers so farmers are actually uh, craving for these uh, seeds and well, that's then, good for them yes of course for for, uh, for, for, the, people, for the country of for course for the people for the country too many nigerians are still very skeptical i mean if it's cotton yeah I mean, i'm not going to eat cotton Right. When, when genetically modified uh, organisms like plants uh, are, are done, when it comes to something like cotton, maybe we not, they may not feel that. So it's just, you know, it's fabric. But when it comes to beans, mm. something that people consume. Yes. Is it safe? Very safe. Very, very safe. Where did people get the notion that genetically modified organisms like plants that we consume could give you cancer? Where did people <laughs> get that idea from? You and see, is there any truth? Has there been any study? at all, linking GMOs to any health risk? Let me tell you something. One, I will tell you, no, there is no any study. So we how much already... information is the biotech agency putting out there for people to understand? We are trying to put, it, put people together, enlighten them and tell them that, yes, this science is new, but we have to take advantage of this science. This science offers so many promising advantages. And if we neglect it, we'll come in the near future to start saying, oh, had it been we knew, we could have embraced this thing uh, as at when do. Well, Professor Mustafa, that's where we wrap it up today on Dateline Abuja. But thank you very much thank for you, being Kela. here with us. And thank good you. luck with the work that you do. Thank you, Kela. Are you still skeptical of genetically modified foods? The first genetically engineered plants to be produced for human consumption were introduced in the mid-1990s. Today, approximately 90% of the corn and soya beans in the market are GMOs. Genetically engineered crops produce higher yields, have a longer shelf life, and are resistant to diseases and pests. These benefits are a plus for both farmers and consumers. But the skepticism is normal. If GMOs can be shown to be both safe and healthy, consumer resistance to these products will most likely diminish. That's Dateline Abuja this week. Please let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handle showing right now on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Magua. See you next time.